I'm Simon Taylor, Head of Ventures here at 11FS, and today I'm here to talk about fintech being 1% finished. So fintech is 1% finished. What do we mean by that? Well, it depends how you think about the market. Uh, I like to think about the market in a maybe a different way, and this is going to take a minute to explain, so bear with me here. On one axis, we might think about the uh, number of customers that a financial services company is serving in a given segment. So we would start down here and we would go across here and the number of customers I'm serving here is higher and the number of customers I'm serving here is lower. To give you an example of somebody that's serving lots of customers, I might think about a retail bank. A retail bank serves a high number of customers versus, say, somebody who's looking after countries or other banks. So, high number of customers, low number of customers, yeah? And then the other axis is to think about what is the relative value of each one of those customers to that bank or financial services company that is supplying them. The value per customer, so the value per customer is higher, and the value per customer is lower. So here what we're saying is, in retail banking, each customer will throw off maybe $100, $200, euros, pounds of profit every year, and up here each bank, uh, each bank client could be worth uh, tens of thousands, if not millions, in uh, profit or revenue in a given year. And what you see is that the market sort of looks a bit like an S. In that there's a massive concentration of customers down here, and there's a very limited concentration of customers up here. But for every customer you acquire up here, you make a lot more money, but it's a lot harder to acquire those customers. What's any of this got to do with fintech? I'll come back to that, but let's just complete this. Let's imagine that above retail, you might have something like wealth. Above wealth, maybe you've got small business banking or SME. Uh, above SME, you might have things like uh, mid-market corporates. Up here, you might have something like global corporates. And up here, you've got institutions. So what about fintech in the UK? Well, I might think about fintech in the UK as having really played in this section of the market here. So I think about retail, I think about SME, I think about wealth. In the retail space, the obvious examples of Monzo, Starling, Revolut uh, really, really play. But also maybe the mortgage space, you might see Trussell, you might see Habito. Uh, you might also see in the wealth space, we've seen uh, you know, sort of uh, Nutmeg, and we've also seen Plum and Moneybox and Free Trade really come into that savings and investments and wealth space. And then in the SME space, in the small business space, what about companies like Tide and Coconut and even Starling starting to make real movements into that marketplace with a digital only tech first type of offering? Now, is that done? Is that complete in the UK? Absolutely not. The way to think about this is to think, how many customers have a digital bank today? Uh, the latest stats that I saw in the UK at the time of recording this uh, were that about 12 million UK customers have a digital bank but most of them aren't moving their salary into that bank. But still, there's a big usage out there. Similar for the wealth space and the SME space. Now, what's quite interesting about this is this UK picture, as you see, you could argue has sort of gone in this direction. As that we saw, maybe 2015, the retail challenger banks entered the market. Uh, and then in the following years, we see Tide and Coconut and we see Starling start to do SME banking. And we also see some direct entrance into the mobile wealth sort of space, which would suggest that the next stop would be the mid corporates or the, the 50 to 100 person businesses as being the next area in the UK that would start to get involved. So this might be an area of 
opportunity to start to consider if you're looking at the UK as a potential challenger brand or challenger bank entry. Or maybe if you're a large bank thinking, actually, where's fintech going to next? And where are the real opportunities in that growth uh, section? And maybe in two to three years time, we'll see a lot more sort of coming up to, to this space, into the institutional and corporate space. What are the problems that can be solved here? Now, interestingly, this is only uh, financial services companies supplying directly to their customer base. What about all of the suppliers to the financial services companies themselves? This is where we think it gets really interesting. This supplier landscape is where things get really, really interesting. If you think about who the challenger banks are using as their suppliers, they're probably not the same suppliers that are used by the incumbent banks. If you think about who the SME banks are using as their suppliers, they're probably not all of the same suppliers. If you think about who the players in the wealth space are starting to use, it might not necessarily be the same suppliers as the ones used by their incumbents. That's really interesting. What's happening in this B2B fintech space is another area to really start to play. So if I'm a financial institution, I have a number of things that I can start to look at. Who are my suppliers? Which area of the market am I gonna to start to want to play in and where do I see opportunity? Where do I see myself in this spectrum and what should I do first? If I were to look at this as maybe a fintech entrepreneur or somebody in financial services as a financial services professional, where would I say that the opportunities are? The opportunities then start to really uh, appear as you think about the market. In the United Kingdom, is there space to do another challenger bank entrant? Quite possibly. You'd have to think very hard about what your differentiator is, but you'd also have to really understand the supplier landscape. And actually this supplier landscape isn't as simple as it first seems. There's actually a whole series of suppliers that do things like onboarding. There are suppliers that do things like KYC. What about payments? What about bank as a service? Do you want to be a supplier to the emerging fintech ecosystem? Do you want to be a supplier to the fintech uh, incumbents, in other words, the banks and financial services companies? Or maybe you're not in financial services at all, but this supplier landscape could be extremely valuable to you as a business as you think about how do I as a big tech monetize my user base? How do I as a telco start to think about uh, market entry or other ways to monetize my relationships with customers? And if I'm a financial services company, uh, how do I start to defend, protect, or even grow by using this supplier landscape in a way that the fintechs have been able to? So that becomes a really interesting question. So timing really depends on the country you're in and where you want to start. As an entrepreneur, but you now have a supplier landscape that looks very different to what it did 10 years ago. And by looking at where, what is your own background, what are your specialisms, can you solve problems where the market will be into two to five years time? Can you do something niche in this space that nobody else is doing? Or can you be part of this supplier landscape? So the opportunities are probably in three spaces. One, in the supplier landscape. Two, really in that space of uh, kind of where the market is headed, market growth. Or three, using your own USP, whether you're a big tech, whether you're a fintech, whether you are a uh, large incumbent provider, or whether you're somebody who's worked in the industry and understands that problem better than anybody else. So I think that's where the opportunities are. And timing wise, really you've sort of seen uh, a two to five year piece as we move up that space. Now imagine we were gonna look at this as if it was in the USA. Would I draw the same picture? Perhaps not. In the USA, I might say that the uh, market has been more concentrated in the wealth space and has done a bit of retail, but we haven't really seen much in the SME space in the USA. 
by the wealth space, I would consider Acorns, I would consider Robinhood, I would consider the recent work with uh, many others, uh, mergers and acquisitions, um, and even the mass affluent uh, space that um, Marcus by Goldman has started to play in as being an area that's been of real focus in the US. Perhaps Chime has played more in the mass market, and have we seen that SME challenger bank in the US yet? I don't know that we have. So the US is in a very different place. But there's a plenty of opportunity in the supply landscape where in the US, perhaps it's more mature than in the UK. Perhaps you have um, bank as a service platform providers and you have major VCs that are starting to do a lot more, especially in the payments and card space. I would think about companies like Marketa, Galileo. I would think about Synapse and Bontech and many, many others who have really transformed that supplier space into something really, really different. So how do I get started? So first, depending on where you are, depending on where you are in the market and where your uh, sort of uni unique uh, selling point is, where your USP, where the thing that you understand sits, uh, once you've understood those, I'd think about uh, what do you need to do uh, for, to really extract that opportunity? What's the, what's the minimum thing that you can do to identify product market fit? And in the supplier landscape, maybe there's somebody that works a little bit differently to the incumbents. Maybe there's something that you can test at super low cost that helps you get started really, really quickly. So this fintech landscape, this fintech is 1% finished, really becomes really exciting when you're starting to consider where to start. If you start to see that there are lots of people playing in the wealth space, maybe the opportunity is to do a me too. If there are lots of people in the retail space, maybe the opportunity is to be a niche. Uh, so who you are and what you want to achieve will color what you do in a great deal. So it turns out FinTech is 1% finished. It's almost like Clayton Christensen was right all along and disruption comes from the edges and works its way up. Uh, listen, if you've enjoyed this show, please remember to like and subscribe and share this with all of your friends too. Thank you.